Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the mini witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about the top tips that you need for speed painting. The faster you are at painting, the more miniatures you can get done and the faster you can go and mochi. Everyone wants to become a faster painter. The faster you can paint means the more minis you can get done and the sooner you can go and play with them. I'm certainly not going to claim to be the best or fastest speed painter, but here are a few tricks that I have found that can help speed up your process. The first one is to set realistic expectations. What quality do you want this miniature to be? How big is this miniature? How detailed is this miniature? How many colors are going to go into this miniature? And how much time do you think it is realistically going to take you to paint it? Setting a goal and not meeting it can be incredibly disheartening. So take some time and realistically think, how fast can I paint this? If it's a 25 millimeter model, you can probably get a pretty good paint in an hour. You could even strive to be able to get display quality in two hours. On the other hand, a six inch model could take you four hours, five, six, seven hours, and that still might be speed painting. So it really depends on a bunch of factors that only you can name, but try to set realistic expectations. If you have the option, do zenithal highlighting. Zenithal highlighting is a type of underpainting done with black and white paint via an airbrush to clearly illustrate the highlights and shadows of your miniature. It's going to save you time because you already know what the highlights and shadows are supposed to look like and where they're supposed to go. And there are several techniques that you can use to incorporate zenithal highlighting into your painting by using inks or washes or thin down glazes, and that's going to save you time as well. Choose a limited color palette. Choosing a limited color palette will make painting easier because you won't have to worry as much about making sure that you only paint a specific section. Imagine the nightmare if you're painting a cape that's white on one side and red on the other, and you accidentally got that red on the white side of the cape. If you were painting your cape entirely brown, you don't have to worry about it as much. Consider the ease of painting a purple and red mini versus painting a purple and yellow miniature. It's just going to be a lot easier. Your blends are going to be easier. You're not going to have to worry about accidental overpainting, and you're going to have to take time to mix less paints. Use inks, contrast paints, and washes as much as you can wherever you can. Washes and contrast paints are sort of cheater paints, and that's not a bad thing when you're trying to do speed painting. Inks and contrast paints can also be applied over xenophil highlights, and it's a great way to get easy highlighting and shadows without really having to do too much effort. Washes are designed to go over base coats and sink into the recesses of your model. They are designed to tint pre-existing paint and add contrast to the recesses. Contrast paints by Citadel are a bit of a combination of a paint and a wash. The coverage is more opaque and it is designed to flow into the recesses of your miniature for more contrast. Inks are an intense dye suspended in a liquid that can be used to tint your model or intensify colors. Unlike paint, Inks can come in varying degrees of transparency. Translucent inks can be applied over and over without obscuring the shading of your xenophil highlights. No matter what, I have found that inks, contrast paints, and washes do not work well over large smooth surfaces like cloth, so keep them for areas where there are more texture or smaller areas. Up next is a technique called wet blending. Wet blending is my favorite because it saves me a lot of time versus layering where I have to thin down my paint to the perfect consistency and then wait for it to dry and then blend all of those layers together. You need to consider both the size and the color contrast between the two colors you plan to blend. Wet blending doesn't work very well on particularly large areas. 
for example, the cape of a 50 millimeter model. When it comes to colors, I utilize wet blending for blending highlights and shadows and similar colors. Wet blending yellow and purple, for example, would be extremely difficult. The next tip is to draw the eye with highlights. What I mean by this is, is that your eyes are automatically drawn to the brightest part of the model. So instead of worrying about other areas that aren't gonna be as important that no one really even needs to look at, focus on the areas that are most important and make those the brightest elements. Areas that I like to draw the eye towards with highlights are the face, magical effects, and weapons. In general, you want to focus your attention on the top half of the model and you're going to make that brighter and you're going to spend less time on the lower half of the model. There's no point in wasting time painting the perfect belt buckle if it doesn't actually matter for the model. Dry brushing is a great way to help pull out these raised details without taking a lot of time. For dry brushing, take a relatively flat brush, dip it into some paint, and then brush most of it off onto a paper towel. Lightly pull the paintbrush across the raised edges of your model. Dry brushing is also great for when you don't need precise detail, like terrain, scales, or for adding weathering. Edge highlighting is similar to dry brushing, where you are skimming the edges with paint. However, edge highlighting is done with the side of a regular brush. Edge highlighting should be done with a lighter color of whatever you are highlighting. This adds dimension and separation without having to go in and paint each section individually. As you continue, you might find that the colors aren't intense enough in your washes, shades, or contrast paints. And if you have the time, you can add a second layer. I know this is supposed to be a speed paint, but this is still me we're talking about. I'm not really spending time blending these highlights. Just consider that wherever you pick the brush up off of your model, the brush will leave a larger deposit of paint. The last step for speed painting is going over your model with a matte medium. Washes, especially Citadel washes, tend to be very glossy, and that gloss can detract from your model. So quickly go over with a matte medium to even out that tone and really complete your model. I hope that these tips were useful to you. Let me know down below. Are there any techniques that I miss that would make me a faster painter? If you like what I do here, you can support me on Instagram, Patreon, or just subscribe down below. I love hearing from you. Please feel free to comment or message me on Instagram or come talk to me at Adepticon. Hearing from you guys makes me feel so excited. So, you all are my favorite. I wouldn't be here without you. So please feel free to come talk to me anywhere, anytime. I can't wait to hear from you. I hope you're having a great time painting and I'll see you on the next one.